Hi, I'm John Waite and I'm here in my own kitchen. This is where I test all my recipes and I'm so happy to be creating a recipe from here for you. Now, I feel very, very lucky to live in the rural countryside of Lancashire because I've got so many beautiful views right out my back door. So me and my partner, Paul, we often go rambling. If you come to Lancashire, you'll see us meandering through the villages. And one of my absolute favorite things to take on one of our walks are my mushroom and bacon phyllo pies. The beautiful thing about this recipe is that it's absolutely a doddle to throw together. The first thing I'm gonna do is get my onion chopped up and and I just chop it nice and finely. Doesn't have to be neat. Now, if you want the full recipe, and I know you do, the link is in the video description. So, you can probably see outside my, I wouldn't say verdant garden, but you know, it's a bit of a lackluster garden. In those big black tubs, I did last year in lockdown grow some potatoes. I came to harvest them, and there weren't any potatoes there. Don't know what I did wrong, but it turns out, even though I'm a farmer's son, I haven't inherited that gene, unfortunately. So I'll just pop to Waitrose next time. Okay, I'm gonna fry off the onions and the bacon in a little bit of oil. I don't need too much oil because obviously the bacon has plenty of fat in it. I love smoked streaky bacon. And I just chopped it up roughly and then to the same pan, just chuck the onions in. Then you can pretty much leave them. What you should do in cookery is listen. That right now sounds like a kind of wet bubbly sound. The minute that turns to like a dry crackle, I know there's no moisture left in that pan and that's when everything could burn. So keep your ears open. So I've said this is a mushroom and bacon phyllo pie, so obviously I'm gonna to need to put some mushrooms in there. The mushrooms I use are the chestnut mushrooms from Leckford, which is the Waitrose and Partners farm. Beautiful mushrooms. So all I'm gonna to do to those is chop them up roughly. Don't worry too much if you've got no knife skills whatsoever. It doesn't matter. People often feel too pressurized when they're at home. And I think mushrooms are one of the most satisfying things to cook because the knife glides like butter slides right through. Oh, before I get carried away and chop everything in sight, I've taken a couple of the mushrooms and I've just sliced them into nice thin slices. And what I'll do with these is I'll put them on top of the phyllo pies later on. So just chop them up, keeping an eye and an ear out on that pan. And these don't need to be precisely chopped. The finer the better, because then they'll cook down more quickly. And just so you know, I don't ever recommend washing a mushroom because they're like sponges. They'll just soak up all that moisture. Just take a damp piece of kitchen roll or a clean cloth and give them a good wipe. Okay, let's have a mosey on over to my pan, see what's going on in here. So I don't want the onions to take on any colour, I just want them to become a little bit more translucent, which means the moisture is gone. And whenever you've got rid of moisture, you've concentrated the flavour. That's really all cookery is about, it's about reduction or concentration. Right, I'm going to chuck my mushrooms in, and just bear in mind that your pan might look a little bit overwhelmed at this stage, but they will cook down. And I'll just take a little bit of salt, because what the salt will do is it helps to draw moisture out. And that moisture then gets evaporated more quickly in the heat of the pan, and therefore everything cooks more quickly. If you know a vegetarian, you could just leave the bacon out, and you could add some actual chestnuts to it, or roasted sweet potato. The good thing about mushrooms is that they have a pretty good flavour in their own right anyway, so they don't really need the bacon. The bacon's a kind of added extra. So just leave that to evaporate and you want this pan to be pretty much dry so I need all that liquid to be gone. So while the mushrooms are sweating down I'm going to crack on with the cheese. Now I like to use a Gruyere because Gruyere is a fairly nutty cheese and it goes so so well with the smoky bacon and the lovely mushrooms but if you wanted to use mild cheddar I'm not going to judge you. So all I'm going to do is while it's still in the packet I just cut through the rind and don't even think about lobbing that in the bin. I collect these not just for fun I put them in the freezer and then whenever I'm making my dog's outside, I do apologise. Evo, shush, daddy's filming. So, whenever I'm making a minestrone, or a soup, or a chicken stock even, I put a Gruyere rind, or a Pecorino rind, or a Parmesan rind in my soup. I can't tell you how it elevates the dish. And I know that sounds really snobby and a bit funny, but it works wonders, so freeze these. Now, I'm gonna grate all of this cheese up. And of course, you've gotta save a little nugget just to make sure it's right. Mmm. Okay, this now is looking quite dry. It's almost like a stuffing that you'd make for your turkey at Christmas. It's a bit like that. So when you get to that consistency, turn off the heat and then I'm gonna add a tub of double cream and it's gotta be double cream. Single cream has a lot more protein in it and protein is what splits and curdles. So you need the fat to coat it. And then half of the cheese, give that a stir. And I love quite a lot of pepper. I know pepper's a perfectly personal preference. All the alliteration, all the peas. And then for the nutmeg, you can buy ground nutmeg and it works perfectly well. I just think fresh nutmeg has got such an old school comforting flavour to it. And nutmeg, cheese, bacon and mushrooms are match made in heaven. Now, you do have to taste this. Cookery is about tasting things. You can't just eyeball it and hope for the best. You've got to use your mouth. 
Mm. That's perfect. So all I need to do now is let that filling cool slightly. So I'm going to just shove it into a bowl. Well, not shove, but pour gently. And I'll crack on with the phyllo pastry shells. So I love to use phyllo pastry. It's so easy. I mean, it's already rolled out. The thing with it is, though, you've got to make sure that you keep it under a damp cloth if you're not using it straight away, because it does dry out very, very quickly. But I've got my three sheets of phyllo here. And all I need to do is cut these into 12 stacks of three. So I'm going to fold it in half first of all, and then just crease it in the middle where I'm going to cut it. Carefully unfold, and I can see my line is there. So if I just take my knife down that line, and then to make it easier and quicker, I put that stack on top of that stack. And I'm going to repeat that process, fold it in half again. So I've got there then my four strips. So I'm going to stack those up, and then this time I'm just going to eyeball it. So I'm going to cut it into three. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. Sound effects, optional. Just make sure I've got 12 stacks of three sheets of phyllo, and that way you can speed on with the next step. So in this pan here, I've got some butter, which I've just melted, and I'm gonna use a muffin tin, not a bun tin, because a bun tin is like one of those very shallow, very delicate, old-fashioned kind of things. We want a bit of depth in this. And then what I do is I take a stack of my phyllo, and I just paint each layer moderately, because if you get it too soggy, it'll disintegrate into nothing. And then what's really important is when you put the next layer of phyllo on, just rotate it ever so slightly, and that's that way, it kind of creates a lovely starburst pattern. And the same with the third layer. And then once you've got a little starburst stack of phyllo, you can pop it into your muffin pan. And it's actually easier to push it in with the butter side down. And that way, that'll get lovely and crispy in the oven. So I'll repeat that with the remaining bits of phyllo. If you wanted to use shop but short crush, you definitely could. If you wanted to use a volavant, this will be a beautiful filling for a volavant. But phyllo is best for these because it's so paper thin. Last one going in. Okay, so the pastry's in the tin, the filling's cool, you know what's next. I'm just going to spoon this in to each pastry case, and I'll just do a spoonful in each and then go back round. We want every pastry case to have roughly the same amount, otherwise they start fighting in the oven. Leftover phyllo pastry is beautiful if you just bake it. You can put layers of it in between butter and icing sugar and have it on ice cream as a very retro dessert. You can also make baklava with it. It's a very versatile ingredient. So that filling is more or less evenly dispersed. So I'm going to take the leftover cheese and just sprinkle that on top of each. And then, do you remember those slices before that we saved? Well, I'm going to pop those on top of each. And that way you know what's in them. Lovely. So 15 minutes in the oven, and then we've got ourselves a little picnic snack. Look at that. Oh, man. They look absolutely beautiful. They're bubbling, so you know they're ready. The phyllo pastry is lovely and golden. It's going to be crispy as anything. Now, I'm going to finish them with a little bit of chive, just to give them a bit more colour. So rather than chop them up, just treat them like a Play-Doh barbershop. Get a pair of scissors and just snip. And if you're lucky, they might go on the pie. <laughs> and if you don't like chive, of course, you could use parsley. Thyme and mushroom is beautiful. Lovely. So there you have them. They look incredible. I wish you could smell them because they honestly smell so beautiful. And they really are the perfect portable snack.